Welcome, I'm Edward, the Training and Technical Sales Manager with RPB Safety. In this quick video, we're going to show you how to set up your PX5 PAPR system for attaching to your Z-Link Plus welding grinding respirator. First, in your kit, you would have received a PX5, the battery, a HEPA filter, a pack of 10 pre-filters, a spark arrestor, a flow meter, the battery charger and the associated cables for that. First, we want to make sure that our battery has been fully charged before we start to use this. This does need to be charged for a full five hours before use. That ensures that you're starting with a full charge so that you don't have to stop partway through a shift to recharge. Batteries that ship on any service do need to be between 20 to 30% charge in transit. So they will need to be fully charged before you use them. Once you've fully charged that battery, you can then simply insert it into the bottom of your PX5 by opening the battery compartment and inserting that battery. The battery will only go in one way. Once that battery is inserted, you can then close that compartment and that has now sealed that battery inside there, protecting it from any moisture or contamination. Now for the filters. You'll probably have to undo the sticky tape that is holding that front door on. What you'll notice is that without the filters in place, that front door simply will not attach to the PX5. That is a safety feature that enables it to prevent you from using the PX5 without filtration. So first we want to take our main P3 filter which is going to insert with the two locators at the top and the two positions at the top of that PX5. You will then press the clip at the bottom and ensure that is clicked into position that is then ready for you to install your pre-filter. The pre-filter will have a slot at the top in the center and two smaller slots down the bottom. The larger center located slot will get attached to the top of the PX5 filter and then the two smaller slots down the bottom. With that now in position, we're now ready to install our spark arrestor. We're going to take our main filter door and there are two clips that need to be pressed down to allow the spark arrestor cover to come away from our filter door. With that now separated, we can then get our spark arrestor and locate it between the two locators on the filter door itself. That spark arrestor will only go on one way up. You can then reattach the spark arrestor cover and ensure that that's clipped into position. And we're now ready to install our filter door to the PX5. When you do this, you want to make sure that that's clipped together properly and that there are no gaps showing around the outside. With that now installed, our battery installed in position, we can now go ahead and turn that unit on. The LED indicators on the front of the PX5 is going to show us our battery charge. It's also going to show us the fan speed as well as our filter capacity. So for the battery indicator, once it gets down to around 5% charge or 10 to 15 minutes remaining, it will start to alarm and vibrate. And it will also be showing a red LED at this point. For the fan speed, you simply press that on off button and that increases the speed of the PAPR therefore increasing the amount of flow coming into the respirator. Finally, you've got the air or filter capacity. So this is telling you how much flow restriction you've got on that filter or any blockages. If you are noticing a blockage, you'll start seeing that this indicator will change from a green to an orange and eventually a red LED before it starts to alarm and vibrate alerting you to remove yourself to a safe area to replace that filter. 
<coughs> to do a simple flow check on the PX5, it's supplied with the flow meter itself. First you want to turn the PX5 on and you want to leave it on for at least five minutes before inserting the flow meter to the outlet of your PX5. Once that's inserted, you can then make sure that that ball rises to the right level for your altitude and temperature. It's important to pay consideration to your altitude because different altitudes and temperatures will affect the amount of flow that the PAPR is providing. So to recharge any batteries, you simply just take that battery out of the compartment and you place it into the charger. That then charges that battery, like I said at the start, will need a full five hours to charge fully. And then you can remove it from the charger and pop it back into the PX5. As you do that, you'll notice the LEDs will briefly show the charge that is on that battery. That is how you can tell a battery is either fully charged or is needing more charge for maximizing the use of that unit. And that's how to use your PX5 PAPR system. Watch the next video for how to connect it to the Z-Link Plus and correct donning and doffing procedures.